hello friends out there in YouTube land. This is Michael Wilson Barber's little YouTube channel. And we are not sponsored by Duluth Trading, although I got this cool shirt. A friend gave it to me uh, with Sasquatch in the woods from Duluth Trading. We are sponsored by Skooka Merch, www.skookamerch.com, where we have made awesome t shirts. So, this is the second in the series of my top 10 favorite Kiss albums and why I chose them, at least recently, as my top 10 favorite. Number two is Creatures of the Night from 1982. So, I have a few reasons why this is my second favorite Kiss album. I chose Love Gun as number one. But this is the first Kiss album that I think I ever had. I was 11 years old when this came out in October of 1982. It's the last album where Kiss appears in makeup before Lick It Up, they took the makeup off. And um, it was produced by Michael James Jackson, not Michael Jackson, the thriller uh, artist who was very good at the time. Uh, well, he was always good. Um, but Michael James Jackson produced this. It still has the Casablanca uh, logo on some of the product, but it was really under Polygram and Mercury at this point. So this is not my original copy from 1982. At some point, unfortunately, I traded it in for other records. You used to be able to do that, take your records in and trade them in. So this is a 2014 uh, reissue on what Andy Graham and I always thought it was cool the way the KISS logo looks on the album and uh, looks like that front and back it's got this KISS I used to make images of this and put them on my folders at school and let me show you the sleeve, man. I always thought the sleeve was pretty cool too. Like a lot of albums in the 80s, they had the song lyrics on the sleeve, front and back, so you could listen to the album and uh, follow the lyrics along, which is another reason I always liked this album. But again, I was 11 years old when this came out. So I have the 1985 reissue on CD and it had an image of Bruce Kulick and Eric Carr, Paul and Jean on the cover without makeup. I just wasn't going to deal with that. I made a copy of the uh, images from the 1982 version and I put them on my CD case. So wasn't going to deal with that one. So um, what else about this album? It's the last album where Ace, Ace's image appears on the album and he did a few promotional things and including the I Love It Loud video. But Ace did not play on this album. We had several different guitarists playing on this album, um, particularly Vinnie Vincent who co-wrote at least four songs and did the solos on several songs. There were a couple of other guitarists who uh, did some guitar work and solos but um, they needed they were getting ready to go on tour and Ace was quitting the band he really wanted to have his own band he had a studio in Connecticut he wanted to go fishing and be with his friends and be lazy in his own words uh, I think he was burned out from being on tour and um, different things of course but Ace wanted to leave the band. Peter had gotten fired. He liked Eric Carr. They seemed to have gotten along fine. But anyway, Ace did some promotions, but they were getting ready to go on tour in the US and they were spending a lot of money. They bought this big, they made this big like tank for Eric Carr's drum set and um, some different stage things. But they needed someone and they chose Vinny. Um, and Paul said, I'm going on record, this is a bad idea. 
with Vinny's personality. But he was a good guitarist and songwriter, but his personality apparently was not very band friendly. Uh, so they went on tour in the U.S. and it pretty much failed. They had not been on tour since in the U.S. since uh, Dynasty. The fan base had been disillusioned with Dynasty, Unmasked, and The Elder, which is my fourth favorite Kiss album, by the way. Review to come later. Um, anyway, Brian Adams, the cut, Cuts Like a Knife guy, and um, uh, Everything I Do, I Do It For You. Yeah, yeah that Brian Adams, he co-wrote a couple of the songs on here, including War Machine which I'll pick my top three favorite songs in this album, War Machine. I love it loud, of course, although it's overplayed. And Creatures of the Night, the, uh, the title song, I'll pick as my three favorite songs. And I Still Love You is a power ballad, and really, Paul Paul's vocals is, are really good. But at least those four songs, um, they Kiss has still played a lot on tour and uh, hundreds of times, most of those songs, and uh, really good songs. But overall, I won't cover every song, but this is a great rock and roll album. It did not go gold initially because, like I said, Kiss had kind of failed their fan base and the early 80s were changing with rock and roll bands like ACDC and uh, Def Leppard was coming, uh, Quiet Riot was coming, other bands were coming in the 80s, Motley Crue, and they, people had left Kiss pretty much. So they took off the makeup for 1983's Lick It Up and uh, were on t MTV More and uh, they researched. But this album later was certified gold and 500,000 copies certified. It's probably sold more than that. It's probably went to a million uh, or close to a million, but because it's a good album. So anyway, that's my review of Kiss Creatures of the Night, my number two favorite album by Kiss of all time. And uh, I will see you next time, as Bob Ross says, God bless and goodbye.